Today we're going to be learning Yevamot Mem Zayim. This is Zaf for Shabbat. For those in Chutz Laaretz, it's also the seventh, the eighth day of Pesach. Um, today's Zaf is sponsored by Devora Radamsky in honor of her daughter, Elisheva Yehudit, on the occasion of her bat mitzvah, Mazal Tov. Today's Zaf is sponsored by Yechiel Berkowitz in loving memory of my mother, Sarah F. Berkowitz. She was a Holocaust survivor, a fighter, and a strong believer in Jewish education. Okay, we're going to get started with our daf now. We're going to start where we ended, in the middle of a brighta. We're going to start from the beginning of the brighta. Very interesting laws, as we've been seeing the last few days, about converts. Um, we're going to continue our discussion about people who have converted to Judaism and more about the process of conversion. Okay, so the, the beginning, it's actually not going to be about the process. It's going to be more about someone comes along and says, I converted. Can we believe them? Can we not believe them? What is, on what does it depend? So Tanu Abanam, we start with the bright. Someone who came along and said, I am a convert, meaning we didn't know them from a hole in the wall. They came out of the blue and they said, right, all we know is they're not Jewish. And then they come and they say, well, I converted to Judaism. So you might have thought we accept them. No, it says in the Pasuk, Itcha, Ki Yagur Itcha Ger, when a uh, person who converts lives with you. In the continuation is Ba'artzachem in your land, lo tonuote. Okay, don't oppress them in any way. So now, what do we learn with itcha with you? That you had some sort of chazaka that they were Jewish, meaning they were part of your community. They were known to be Jewish. If someone comes to you and says, Oh, I converted, if they're known to be Jewish, we can accept them. But if they were not known to be Jewish, then we don't trust them. But Bave Davimo, in other words, how are they trusted? Well, they come with witnesses that prove that they converted. So from there we learn that we learn how do we know? It's not exactly clear where we get it from this Pasuk, but they assume if he's living among you, right, it's because there's witnesses. In other words, there is a way we can accept him, and that's with witnesses. Kamar is going to ask later, why do we need a Pasuk for that? We know by witnesses we prove anything, so why would you need a special drasha for this Pasuk, for this halacha? Be in your land. So now it sounds like maybe only in Israel. This only teaches you in, in the land of Israel. How do we know outside of Israel? With you anywhere that you live. Okay, therefore we can accept converts if they bring witnesses. Soon the Gemara is going to ask, didn't we already use itcha for a different drasha? How can we use it for two drasha? We'll get back to that. So now, first of all, the Tosfat Arash says, what would even be the thought? Okay, this is again, they suggested maybe only in Israel that Two Adim can prove it, but maybe not in Chutz It's Why would you think that? Because maybe we only accept converts in Israel because Israel is a place where it's easier to be Jewish. Maybe it's much more difficult in outside of Israel, so maybe we wouldn't accept converts. Comes the Pasuk to teach you, no, we accept them as well. Imken Matamulomar Ba'aretz. So then why does it say Ba'aretz if it's converts can be accepted everywhere? Why does it say Ba'aretz Sechem? Now we actually bring the opposite logic, which is outside of Israel, maybe you don't need proof. In Israel, you need proof. The truth is, this is saying, okay, Devere Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah thinks that if you claim you're a convert in Chutz Laaretz, outside of Israel, you don't actually need witnesses because who in their right mind would want to convert outside of Israel? But if it's in Israel, we're suspicious, and this we've seen before, then maybe you want to convert for the wrong reasons, right? This is the exact opposite logic that we just said before. Before we said, we'll accept you, more likely accept you because more likely you'll keep with it. Whereas now we're saying the opposite. Many people want to convert to Judaism just because they want, and we know this from nowadays, they want citizenship in Israel and that's why the government is so suspect of people who want to convert. But, right, that's the concern and we saw this in a number of other sugyot already. But no matter where you are, you always have to bring a proof. We can't just assume because you say, I converted, that we can trust you to be a convert again, unless you're already living as a Jew within the community. But if you're not living as a Jew, and we'll get to that case soon, if you're not living as a Jew within the community, then you need to prove with witnesses. So now that's the end of the bright. Now we're going to go back and explain different parts of the bright. Bahuve Davimo comes with witnesses. What do we need a verse for? It's obvious. It's witnesses. If they say we heard that this person converted in a particular court, maybe we wouldn't believe him. We believe them. Okay? We believe the witnesses who say 
I heard they converted in a particular court. Now, why do we do this? Normally, hearsay is not accepted. So first of all, maybe we make an exception in this case. Another possible reason is because when they, this is something that we say, it's hatid li gilui. We can eventually figure this out. If they say, I heard they, could, they converted in Beit of so-and-so, someone can go check that out. And if they find out it's not true, those witnesses are going to be proven wrong. Witnesses wouldn't lie like that if, it's, if you bring something that could be checked out and determined not to be the case. So therefore, we can accept their testimony. Ba'aretz and liyala aretz. Ba'chutz aretz We're basically going to quote different parts of this b'rita and then ask about them. So this is just a quote. Talmud lomar itcha b'kom akom sheitcha. Ha'afikte. But didn't we already use itcha for the drasha of b'muchzak lecha? It has to be someone who's living among you who you have a sense that, they've, that they're Jewish already. Talmud lomar chadami itcha v'chadami imach. Okay, one learns it from Itcha, that was the Pasuk we saw before, and another, which was in Vayikra chapter 19. The other one learns it from a verse of Vayikra chapter 25, which says, Rashi quotes it here, um, which is, sorry, I'm looking for the Rashi, Imach, Ger v'tosha v'chai Imach. Okay, a Ger, it's talking about a convert, and then it says, and they live with you. So again, with you comes to teach you something additional. One taught you that they have to be mochzak lecha, known to you, among you, and the other teaches you wherever you are, not just in Israel. Okay, next. Ba'aretz, sorry. Um, the rabbis say, You have to bring a proof whether you're in Israel or whether you're outside of Israel. So what does he do with Ba'aretz, the rabbis? Right? Ba'aretz, according to the rabbis, was teach you even in Israel you could accept converts, even though maybe they have ulterior motives. Right? So that's what they're going to say now. You might have thought because all of the good that Israel has to offer, maybe they're converting for that. Other motives. Nowadays, where we don't have all those great things anymore. Okay, we're now describing a later time period when things weren't so great for the Jews in Israel. Still, they have a good system of a socialized system where they take care of people. There's insta, there's, um, what do you call it? There's, uh, there's all sorts of things that help the poor. Okay, the leket, the shecha, the pay, all the things you leave in the field for the poor, the maser ani. Those are all things that are dependent on the land of Israel. They don't happen outside the land of Israel. So there's a, that's what I was looking for, there's an infrastructure, there's good infrastructure for people who need help. So maybe that's why they're converting, because that only exists in Israel. Kamashman, we can accept them as well. Halacha. How do we paskin in this issue? This is the, how do we paskin in terms of, do you need proof also in Israel, also in, out of Israel? Yes, you do, because the rabbi said so. To which the Gemara asks, Pshita, this is obvious. Whenever there's majority opinion and minority opinion, we always pass on them by the majority. So the rabbis said you need proof. Rabbi Yudah said you didn't. We obviously pass on like the rabbis. You might have thought, Well, maybe Rabbi Yudah has a better proof because he has sukim to prove it, whereas the rabbis just kind of gave their opinion without really bringing proof from the verse. So, that's why he teaches us, no, in any case, we still hold like the rabbis. Tanu Rabbanon, another bright about converts. Ushfatetem tzedek ben ishu ben achiv u ben gero. You should righteously rule, right? Find justice between man and his fellow man, and between right man and his brother, and between a convert. Mikan amar Rabbi Yehuda, ger shenit gayer bebeitin areze ger. Because it talks about a ger in this pasuk, a convert, and because it mentions shfatetem tzedek with a beitin, you learn from here, even though it's not really talking about that, that. A ger shenit geyer bebeitin is a ger. Rabbi Yehuda says, you need to convert in a court. Beino lebein atzmo, eino ger. If a person converts on their own, right, there's certain things you could do on your own, but conversion is not one of them. You need to con- con- to do your conversion in a court. It's a question we're going to bring up later, and it came up already before, about what parts of the conversion process have to be done in front of a court. Okay, we'll get back to this soon. So now they say, Beno lebein atzmo, right? You're not a ger. Maaseh be'echad shabah lefnei Rabbi Yehuda v'amar lo. There was a case of a guy who came before Rabbi Yehuda and said to him, Nit gayarti beni lebein atzmi. I converted on my own. So now, here was this man. He was living in the community. Everybody thought he was Jewish. He shows up one day and he says, Oh, by the way, I converted by myself. Amar lo, Rabbi Yehuda, yesh chayidim. He says, do you have witnesses? Amar lo, love. He says, no, I don't have witnesses. He says, yesh lo chabadim. Do you have sons? Amar lo, hen. He says, yes, I do. Amar lo, 
you can mess yourself up right now. By t- now that you told me that you converted by yourself and you have no witnesses to it, we can't accept you as a convert. You're not Jewish anymore. But this is what we call Shavia Nafshe Chaticha Yisura. He made himself, right? He, I testified about himself and caused himself to be forbidden, basically. He can't marry a Jew now. He can't be part of the Jewish community. But But you can't make your children psulim. Now, what does it mean psulim? First of all, if his children were married were with a Jewish mom, so they're still Jewish, they cannot be Jewish. Some people say the Rabbi Yehuda must hold that the children of a non-Jewish man and a, and a Jewish woman must be mamzerim. And that's why he said, you won't disqualify your children and there won't be mamzerim. Okay, now we don't hold that way anyway, but maybe Rabbi Yehuda held that way and that's what he was saying here. That's one option. One is saying, you shouldn't have a stigma upon, your children won't have a stigma upon them, even though they're really Jewish, but they won't have a stigma of having a non-Jewish father because we're not going to accept your testimony to mess up your children. Soon we're going to see why that is. And... Um, some people think that what it was was a case of both parents had converted and therefore it was basically saying we don't believe that either of you are Jewish but we're going to accept your children as Jewish which is interesting uh, okay in any case he's told for whatever it is your belief for yourself you're not believed for your children so now they question this did he really say you're not trusted on your children doesn't the bright to say this is a very important halacha. This is a halacha. It comes up with yakir is a word in the pasuk that talks about your if you want to give a different one of your children the pishnaim of the bechor. Okay, you can't decide. Okay, this is a we learned this not so long ago. There's the bena aruva and the bena snua, the one who's loved and the one who's not loved. Kiet bechor bena snua yakir latelo pishnaim becholish ayim tzalo ki hu roshito no lo mishpat bechora. The bechora goes to the oldest. Now, then it says, Yakir Latelo. You will recognize to give him. Now, what does it mean you will recognize? So they learn from here, Yakirenu Achirim. Who's trusted to say, right? Who, who's the only one who knows who the father's firstborn is? Himself. Maybe he slept around with someone. Maybe he has a firstborn with a different wife. So, right, the firstborn is always the firstborn from whatever wife you had your firstborn child. So the father is believed to say, This is my firstborn child. So this has ramifications in all sorts of areas. And this is what they're saying about Gerim. He should be able to testify about his child, to say his child is not Jewish, right? If he said about himself he's not Jewish, he should be able to testify or that his child is the, has a father, a non-Jewish father. He should be because Yakir is something for him. Now, why is this such a relevant halacha? So first of all, if a man um, claims that a child that is his child, seems to be his child from his marriage, is not, and he claims his wife slept with somebody else, and the child's a mom's there, He's believed to say, this is not my child. Now, that is a very dangerous halacha because he could want to be vindictive against his wife and claim that the child is not his. So there's certain limitations on this, but it is used in court even nowadays, this idea of we trust the father to say, this is his child or this is not his child. And it's very interesting. So one of the limitations, which helps prevent some of this, is that if he's listed on the birth certificate as the father, then we don't accept it because he, he, there's already proof that he's the father. If he really wasn't the father, he would never have put his name on the birth certificate. So there's interesting uses of this. Again, I'm, I'm kind of mentioning things I don't know enough about, but I do know that this is used in courts nowadays in Israel, maybe in other places also in terms of, you know, in Jewish courts to to decide paternity of in certain issues. And, and it could really cause mamzerim issues. So now the Gemara says, right? So Rabbi Yehuda says, and mikan, so yakir yikiren ulacherim, Mikan Amar Rabbi Yehuda, from this halacha Rabbi Yehuda said, Ne'eman adam lomar zebeni b'chol. He's trusted to say, this is my oldest son. Ukeshem sheneeman lomar zebeni b'chol, kach ne'eman lomar, b'ni ze ben gurushahu o ben chalutzai. You can also say, this son was born with this woman that I was married to. She's a divorcee and I'm a Kohen. And really, he's a halal and he can't be a Kohen. So he's trusted to mess up his children if he wants to. So why in the convert case did Rabbi Yehuda say he can't? Seems like the same thing. The Chachamim omrim no ne'eman. The rabbis don't think so, but Rabbi Yehuda does, and he's the one we were talking about. So we're going to have two possible answers which have interestingly different ramifications. This is what they said to this convert, who really wasn't a convert at the end. According to what you said, you're a Gentile. If you're a Gentile, well then, the next step is, we're not going to trust you about your sons because we'd have to accept your testimony then. It's kind of, right, 
It must have been an oxymoron. We don't we accept your testimony about yourself as soon as we do that. Right now you're a Jew. Now we accept your testimony about yourself that disqualifies you. You're now a Gentile. Well, if it's going to affect your children, well, that far we don't go because at this point you're a Gentile. We can't accept your testimony. Ravina, and again, because of Shavya Nafsha, Chatichad Yisur, he can make himself an object of Yisur, which means normally you can mess up your children, but not if you're a Gentile. And here, he's a Gentile. Ravina, Amar Hachi Kamrale. This is really what happened. Yesh Chabanim, they said, do you have sons? And he said, hey, yes, I do. Yesh Chabanim, do you have grandsons? And he said, hey, yes, I do. Amar lo, ne'eman atalif so banecha. Because of this special law of Yakir, Yakirenu, right, la Chirim, you're trusted about your your son. So just like you can make yourself chatiyah so you can also make your sons. But, So one way of reading this is, when he said, you're not trusted for your sons, what he really meant was your grandsons. But another way, which seems to be more of the pshat, also from the continuation is, since he's not allowed to do it to his grandchildren, by messing up his sons, he's actually messing up his grandchildren. So, by calling his sons, Psulim, right, that the, you have a father who's non-Jewish, that's going to mess up the grandchildren, in which case, again, it could be, according to Rabbi Yehuda, let's assume that the child would be a mom's ear, that would mean their children are mom's ear, and so that's why we don't believe him, even about his children, because it has effects on the grandchildren. If it only affects the child, like before, it would only affect the child, not the grandchild. Then you're allowed to, you're not allowed to do it to mess up grandchildren. Tanya Namiachi is a bright to support this. Rabbi Yehuda Omele, Eman Adam Lomar, Beno Katan, Ve'en Eman, Beno Gadol. He's trusted for his young child, not for his older child. What does this mean? Amor Bichir Barab, Amor Rabbi Yachan, Lo Katan Katan Mamash, Lo Gadol Gadol Mamash. We're not talking about younger child, minor or non-minor. Ela Katan Ve'yesh Lo Banim Zeu Gadol, Gadol Ve'en Lo Banim Zeu Katan. It's nothing to do with your age. It means, are you a minor but you have children? Or are you a, a non-minor, but or you're, you're a grown-up but you have no children? It all is, do you have children? That's what it meant by katan and gadol. So again, if you have no children, that's katan, and then we, we believe you. But I'm sorry, we, right, if we say you're, right, we believe you because it's just your child. If it's a gadol, that means you have children, and then we don't believe you. Even though we just brought a bright to the proof, Ravina, we actually hold like Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. He's a Gentile, which means in other cases, we will believe him. Just in this case, because he's a Gentile, we're not going to believe him. And then, Hatanya Kavate de Ravina, but didn't we just bring a bride to the Prus Ravina? So they say, Aulinyan Yakir Itmar. That was said about Yakir, that wasn't said about a Gentile. If it was a Gentile, it was a conversion issue, and his conversion wasn't good, then he's a Gentile. Well, then we don't even get into that. So the bride wasn't even talking about that case, and that's why Rav Nachman's answer is chosen instead. Tanu Rabbanan, another bride. Here we get to the process of conversion. Okay, in our day, which is the time of the Tanaim, Omrimlo, Mahaita Shabbat Alit Kayer, why do you want to convert? Yet I dare to know she is Rabbis Manazed, Fuyim, the Hufim, Shufim, Mutafim, the Yusurim by Malahem. Don't you know the Jews are low? They're nobodies. They're struggling. They have issues, right? There's anti Semitism. There's Yusurim, right? They're always out to get them. It's not so easy to be a Jew. If he says, I know anyway, and I'm not even worthy to be part of the Jewish people, then we accept him. We start to tell him a little bit about the mitzvahs, right? No, nothing here about you need a year conversion course, you need, right, you need to know everything there is. No, you start to tell him some of the basic mitzvot, some of the easy ones, some of the difficult ones. You start to tell him, we'll back to this, right? And all the matanot on you start to tell him about that. We're going to have to see later why. You tell him about some of the punishments. You know, before you came to the Jewish people, if you ate the forbidden fats, you didn't get karet for them. Right? You, you were mechalel Shabbat. You wouldn't get stoned for it. Now, you're going to get karet if you eat the chalev. You're going to get stoned. Not only do we say all the negative, though, we also tell them the positive, all the rewards you're going to get. The world to come is only for righteous people. We're now moving to Amabet, saying that the Jews are not accept, they're not capable of getting too much good. That's not good either because it causes the Yetzirah to come in and kind of mess people up. 
and not too much bad because God protects us. Ve'en marbin alav. Now you don't say too much. Okay, we'll get back to all these things and why. Ve'en medakta kim alav. And we're not so particular with him about every little detail. Kibel malinoto. Right, you see how law, how conversion has changed over the years. Kibel malinoto miyad. If he accepts it, we immediately give him a brit milah. Some of the strips of the foreskin are still left. We have to. You might need a second brit milah to get rid of all those extra pieces. We'll talk about that later. What they are. Nitrape. Once he's healed from the brit milah, then immediately we put him into the mikvah. Okay. So now, why don't we do it in the reverse order? It would have been smarter. First do the tefillah and then do the brit milah. So a bunch of answers are given for that. Why we do it in this order and not that? Because here you have to have a bit of a delay. Okay, maybe it's also to make sure that they really want to be part of it. Right? The brit milah is the painful part. So you have to. that's the thing that's going to deter people more. So maybe do that first and then go to the tefillah after. Again, there's different answers given. So now, when you take him to the mikvah, there's two tamadiyah chachamim. You might be saying, wait, aren't there three? So we'll get back to that. While he goes to the mikvah, they're telling him, right, there has to be this kabbalat or mitzvot while you're in the mikvah. That's why there was always a court of rabbis. There are three rabbis. In a second, we're going to get to women. Okay? He goes into the mikvah, he comes out, he's like a Yisrael for everything. Okay, we'll see what is, exactly does that mean. Isha, it's very the same language, by the way, they used about the Yabam. Once he marries her, he, she's right? It's as if She's his wife, even though they did yibum and not marriage, but she becomes his wife. Here, he becomes a Yisrael of Isha, and you find this very interesting, Nashim Moshivoto Tabamayim Ad Safara, women help her into the water until her neck. Ushnei Tamidin Chachamim Omdimla Mi Bachutz. And the two rabbis this time stand outside. Okay? I know, hold off with your questions. Umodi'in Ota Mitzat Mitzvot Kalot Umitzat Mitzvot Chamorot. And then they tell her, some of the mitzvot kalot comes up mitzvot chamorot from outside, and right, and this is all true. Echad ger, echad eved, mishukrat. This is true for a ger. It's also true for an eved who is freed from slavery, who now becomes a Jew. There's an eved knani who becomes when he, if he's freed ever, even though you're not supposed to free them. If you free them, they become Jewish, and they have to undergo a conversion again to become Jewish. Okay, what about the women issue? This is a very big issue nowadays because. Generally, when one does a conversion, there's three rabbis in the room. And this has become a big issue lately. People, you know, women are saying, why can't women be there in the room with them? Why do you need men? Why do, why do the women have to be in the room? Can't they be outside the room, right? Women generally wear some sort of robe. There's, you know, robes people have created also that are loose and that can basically kind of not ride up. But they have pants, legs in them and, you know, to make it a more... Sanua thing, but it's still not very sanua, and it's very bothersome to many female converts that there's men in the room while she's going to the mikvah. So there's been a number of articles written about this, okay? And um, I'll post a link to this in the in the in my in the site. There's a good article by Rabbi Jeff Fox who goes through all the sugyot that we've learned and basically tries to show all the different approaches of the different right. Besides, he has his own approach about what he thinks. Halachalamas it should be, but he also gives an excellent analysis of all of the different opinions of the Rishonim and Achronim and where they get it from. In the in basically all the sugyot are the three dapim that we just learned about different sugyot. And he, he says it very well at the beginning. The question is really a matter of prioritizing, like which this sugyot clearly somewhat contradict each other. And right, we saw two dapim ago about that if she went because she was in Nida and then that could count for a conversion or he went to the mikvah for some other reason, right? That even though clearly there were no other rabbis in the room and there were no, right? So how do you rectify that? So again, it's a matter of which sugya you choose. This is the one and not the other that we're going to hold by um, and how you try to reconcile them together or just say we don't hold this way or and that. So I'll, I'll post a link to it in, in the site and also on the Hebrew site, Michal Tkachinsky wrote, a, uh, Dr. Michal Tkachinsky wrote a famous article about this, about could women be the Dayanot in, you know, the Dayanim basically, or Dayanot in the, in the mikvah. So these are, this is a very interesting topic and it's hopefully the kind of issue that will change over time um, based on these Piskei Alecha that are being written. Okay, now, um, and part of it is also what do you define as Mibachutz? What does it mean they're outside? They're outside the room entirely? They're outside, you know, in a separate area, but in the room, it, it's unclear exactly. Okay, next. Okay, 
Okay, and in a place where the nida goes to the mikvah, this meaning when a nida goes to the mikvah, all the criteria for what defines something as a mikvah, it's the same thing for this kind of thing. Don't think this is some other kind of tefillah. You need a different kind of mikvah. All the criteria for that are here, true for here. Right? We've learned all sorts of halachot about mikvahot throughout the, the our daf learning. Right, anything that's a chatzitza, that's a separation between their body and the and the mikvah is going to be a separation for them as well. Okay, now the Gemara is now going to continue still in the Brita and try to analyze different parts of it. Amar ma, ger shabal itkayer omrim lo, ma raita shabat alitkayer umodino to mitzvah mitzvah kalon mitzvah mitzvah chamorot. Right, so this is just a quote. You start telling him about mitzvot and why do you want to convert? My time, or what's the reason? Deparish nifor, so that if he wants to decide, I don't really want to do this, he will. Why are we trying to do this? Tam Rabbi Chalbo, it's a famous line. It's a bit of a negative approach toward accepting conversions. And just so you should know, there's different approaches. This is not the only approach. There's many other approaches as well. Kashim gerim l'Yisrael kesapachat. Converts are difficult to the Jewish people like sapachat, which is a leprous scab. Dichtiv, how does he get that? Vinilveha gerale alehem, vinispechu abet yudan. Nispechu is like they were annexed to the people. But they learn the root sapach from sapacha of the leprous mark. So this shows it in a negative light. So why is it negative? So there's an interesting different approaches given as to why. I'm going to read a whole bunch that are quoted in the Tosfot here on the page. Tosfot says it's the very bottom Tosfot, Kashim Gerin Lisel Kesapachat. Number one, they don't know mitzvot so well, so the Jews are going to learn from them, possibly. Number two, he says, Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebazer, we're responsible for everyone. So if other people sin, we're responsible as well. If they don't know mitzvot, they're going to sin, we're going to be responsible. Number three, he mentions, she, he actually has a problem with that one, but anyway. The next thing he says, because they intermingle with us, and ein shechina shora, ela al mishpachot hamiyuchasot. There's some special thing about the shechina being on families have good yichus, where they can go back and trace their lineage. And these people obviously don't have lineage because they just came to the Jewish people. And therefore, that's another one. And another one he brings is, you can see he's bringing so many because it's not really so clear why. It's always when you have that kind of thing. He says, because, this is a really interesting one, because we're commanded many times to treat the game properly. And that's a challenge for people. And it shouldn't be such a challenge, but for some people we know it's not so easy to treat people who are different um, and because of that, it's going to cause us to sin because we won't treat them as well as we're supposed to. So that's an interesting one. And the most interesting one is the one that's not quoted here in Tosfo, but quoted in Kiddushin Daf Ayin Amubet. And it's interesting because it's quoted in the name of Avraham Hager, okay, a convert whose uh, name was Avraham, that Gerim are more careful about mitzvot than we are. And that makes us look bad. And that one I like the best because it's, it's not putting the Gerim in a bad light. It's putting us in a bad light and saying, it makes us, and this is very commonly happens, where especially if you have a, uh, sometimes it happens with a couple, where one converts to marry the other and they start learning to go through the conversion process and they become more careful about mitzvot than the other one because they learn and they're interested in it and they're coming from a different perspective. And it, So it's interesting. They can make us look bad. I like that one better. Okay, now. So why specifically those? My time. I'm Rabbi Chirbaab, I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Jews are commanded not to steal, and if we do steal, though, we're, we can return it. Gentile, and, and we can, we're only liable if we steal something worth a pruta, which is a certain you know, minimum amount of money, because anything less than that, people don't really care about. So if I steal it, it doesn't really mean very much. But B'nai Noach, the Noach had laws, include even less than that, because Non-Jews care much more even about every little amount of money. And that's why specifically, we t- and plus, they're not allowed to fix it by returning it. It seems like the returning part doesn't have so much to do with our topic. It's actually not 100% clear how it connects. But it seems that the idea of the Pachot Mishavah Pruta shows they really care about every little amount of money. And that's why it's important to tell them, you're going to have to give charity, okay? This is not, not all of the money you make is going to be yours. Okay? This is part of our system. So I'm a Rabbi Elazar, my Kha, where do we learn this? Tiktiv, we're going to learn it from Root, Root, who converts. Very famous Pasuk says, this one is less famous, but we're going to see soon. When Nomi saw that Root really wanted to go with her, she stopped trying to convince her not to come. 
Amrala. So now they're going to talk about the conversation that happened with them, and it's going to come from this verse, Ba'asher Tolchi Elech, Ba'asher Talini Alin, right? I will go in your way, I will sleep where you sleep, and etc. So we're going to see all the parts of that right now. So she said, Nomi says to Ruth, Asir lach tchum, asir lach tchum Shabbat. On Shabbat, you're not going to be able to walk beyond the Shabbat limits. Ba'asher Tolchi Elech, I'll go wherever you walk. Asir lan Yichud, you can't be alone with a man. But, right, if you're not unmarried, Ba'asher Talini Alin, I will sleep the way you sleep. Mafkidin an shesh me'ot v'yugimu mitzvot. We're commanded about 613 commandments. Amechami, your nation is mine, I'm game. Asir lan avodah zara, you can't worship idols. Ve'elohayich elohay, your God will become my God. Arba mitot beitin nimsiru lebeitin. Arba mitot nimsiru lebeitin. There's four different punishments, death, capital punishments you can receive. Ba'asher tamuti amud, I will die the way you die. If I do something that incurs that punishment, I will accept it. We saw this a few weeks ago, that there are different cemeteries for different people who were killed by the court, right? The ones who were the more strict and the ones who were the less strict ones. I'll be buried there, no problem. He, as soon as she saw that, she said, okay, I'm going to stop talking to her. That's how we see, don't say too many things to the girl to try to discourage. Try a little bit. After that, move on. Kibel malino tomiyad. Why do we do it immediately? Why do we rush to do it? My taima shahuye mitzvah lo mashinan. We don't wait to do a mitzvah. Okay, when a mitzvah comes to our hands, we do it right away. What's the mitzvah here? So some people say it's vahavta metagel. You should love the ger and embrace them. So as soon as they're ready, go for it. Nishayhu bo tzitzin hamakvin amila. Here we get a little graphic detail about what exactly these tzitzim are. Where are they? Kiditznan, as it says in the Mishnah, eluhen tzitzin hamakvin amila. These are the tzitzim that the, the, the um, pieces of skin, that there's extra skin that have to be removed from the, from the foreskin. Basar chofe et rova atara. Okay, it's the flesh that covers the majority of what's called the corona, okay, the tip. Ve'en ochel betruma, and if you have that, you can't eat truma. Ve'amar rabi yirmi abarab, amar rab, basar chofe rov gov hashel atara. It's the, it's foreskin that's covering the majority of the height of the corona, and that's considered the sitzina makvim. Anyone who wants to can go into further detail and figure out exactly where these are. I'm going to suffice with that. Nitrape matbilino tomiyad. Nitrape in, lo nitrape lo. It sounds like only if you're cured, you're healed. My time, why is that? Mishum demaya marzumaka. Because the water is bad for the any kind of wound. Right? We all know this. If something happens, right, or you have surgery, you're not allowed to get the area wet. So that's why we can't go in the mix. Right? It's prone to infection. He said to the Tana, change it to three. Okay, even though it said two, and in fact it said two in two different places, by the woman and before that by the man. But say it must be changed to three, it must be three, because we know it to be three from other places. This is where we get, right? Besides we saw it before, also we get here that you need three people. What's the halacha? If he decides to change his mind, I don't want to be a Jew anymore, and he then marries a Jewish woman, he's called the Yisrael Mumar and Kiddushav Kiddushin. It's a valid Kiddushin. If a non-Jew marries a Jew, it's not a valid Kiddushin. But this is a valid Kiddushin. And she's, con- first of all, it means she's considered an Eish Adish, right? Because... Once a Jew, you're a Jew. Just like a Jew can't decide I'm leaving my religion. He's always, in our mind, is always going to be considered a Jew. So likewise, this convert, the same. It's by the way, it goes somewhat against certain practices of the rabbis. This happens in Israel and other places where they come and say, you know, we see you're not really halachic Jews. We're taking away your conversion. You can't really take away a conversion. And what they'll claim is, well, your conversion was never good in the first place. But it's really not appropriate to start saying someone is not a convert, right? The same way it says it clearly here that once you convert, you're a convert and you're you're Jewish. You're not a convert. You're Jewish and you're Jewish for all intents and purposes. Last part for today. They assumed when it said, this is all true for the Ger and the Evan Meshuchar, it was written right after the part that talked about accepting mitzvot. So it sounds like you need to accept mitzvot even if you're an Evan Meshuchar. Now remember, the Evan Meshuchar, when they were an Evan, they had mitzvot upon them already. So we're going to see. It seems like you don't have to do all mitzvot. Or you don't have to accept mitzvot upon yourself when you do the tefillah because you've already accepted mitzvot. Now you just can't do the extras that you weren't commanded to do before, but which were the positive time-bound commandments, but otherwise you were already commanded. 
Uriminu, Bamed, this contradicts the source. Bamed, Varim, Amorim, Begil. This is only a convert. Aval Be'eve, Meshuchar, and Tzarech Lechabel, he doesn't need any sort of acceptance of mitzvah. So on Rav Shesh, Lokash, Yahara, B'Shem, Ben-Alazar, Hara, Banan. It's a machloka between Tanaim. So our source is going by one, and this brighter that we just quoted is going by another. What's the machloka? Tanya, Ubachta, Tavia, Ve'etima. The context here is Eshe Yifat Torah. This is when you go out to war, see a beautiful woman, and you want to be with her, so you can't just rape her, like happens sometimes in war, but you have to protect her. How so? You can marry her, but she has to go through a process. You have to let her to have her nails grow long, her hair grow long. Then you can, um, she cries for her parents for 30 days, and this, this process she goes through till she kind of can become Jewish and you can marry her, or be with her. So it says, It's only if she doesn't agree to convert right away. She decides, I'll accept mitzvot upon myself. You can skip that whole process. And then he's fine. He can be with her right away. You can actually come up with a different solution. The fact that the rabbis don't institute the solution shows that they don't think that a shifcha needs it shows that they think a shifcha would need kabbalat al mitzvot. But you'll see what Rabbi Shimon al Azar thinks. He thinks a shifcha does not need kabbalat al mitzvot, and we're going to see it right now. Kofa matbila l'shem shifchut. You can make her your maidservant. Put her in the mikvah. That you can actually force someone to be. Okay, again, a little unpleasant to think about, but you can force someone to be your maidservant. Then at that point they accept mitzvot because you force it upon them. Then chazer matbila l'shem shichur. Then you can free her. And then you let, she goes to the mikveh again to be freed. She doesn't need Kabbalah mitzvot. So even if she didn't accept mitzvot, you can have her basically avoid that whole process of growing the hair and the nails and, and making her wait 30 days. But you could do that. So the fact that he thinks you could do this shows you obviously don't need Kabbalah mitzvot for a shifcha who's freed. Whereas the rabbis think you do, and that's why they don't suggest this option. And that's how we resolve the contradiction between the two bright tote. They're actually two different opinions. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about Rabbi Shem ben Elazar's position in tomorrow's daf, and have hope, wishing everybody uh, uh, Chag Sameach, Shabbat Shalom, depending on when you're listening to this, or Shavua Tov, as they say in Israel, uh, Kayetz Naim, a pleasant summer, because this is the kind of the end of the winter season, so wishing that to everybody, and we'll pick up after the Chag.